when the European first came here, Columbus, we could drink out of any river. If the Europeans had lived the Indian way when they came, we'd still be drinking out of water because the water is sacred. The air is sacred. Our DNA is made of the same DNA as the tree. The tree breathes what we exhale. When the tree exhales, we need what the tree exhales. So we have a common destiny with the tree. We are all from the earth. And when the earth, the water, the atmosphere is corrupted, then it will create its own reaction. Mother is reacting. And the world has become, quote, a market. And it's this market that we have to deal with. And it's this idea of boundless and endless resources. And when you say resources, you're talking about our relatives, you're talking about our family. Fish are our family. It's not a resource, it's a family. It requires all the respect. The structure of the world itself is such, it functions on natural law, and the natural law is a powerful regenerative process. There's a process of regeneration that continues and grows and is endless. It's absolutely endless if everyone agrees to the law and follows the law. But if you challenge the law, and you think you're going to change the law and you're bound to failure and then that failure will be a lot of pain because the natural law has no mercy it is only the law the earth is all powerful it wasn't made here for human beings he said we're part of it But we don't have to be here because the earth has its own process. And if it becomes to the point where you destroy yourself as human beings and you destroy life and finally leave this earth, the earth's not going to disappear. There's not going to be an end of the world. That's really a very interesting concept to us. No, the world won't end people's life on it will so it's not the end of the world you're talking about it's the end of us and the world no matter what damage you think you've done to it will regenerate will re-green will redo everything that was here at one time except there won't be any people because it's got all the time in the world. As you're coming down the final stretch, you're racing towards the finish, and there is the stone wall, and you're not pulling your horse. You're not stopping you're not you're in fact accelerating that's the way i see the use of what you call resources you're using them faster than they're reproducing
and you're headed towards that disaster, and none of you are pulling your horse. And every day that you don't do what's right is a day that you've lost an option. And you're losing your options every day. No tree grows by itself. A tree is a community. Certain trees, certain plants will gather around certain trees. And certain medicines will gather around those certain plants. So that if you kill all the trees, if you cut all the trees, and you're destroying the community, you're not destroying, not just de destroying a tree, you're destroying a whole community that surrounds it and thrives on it, and that may be very important medicine for people or for animals. So you've lost a community, and if you clear cut, which is what's happening in America and Canada a great deal these days, and I guess around the world, then you are really a very destructive force. And simply replanting trees is not replanting community. You lost a lot in the process. If you don't understand that, you will. And that understanding comes in a very difficult manner. That of the hundred dominant economic units in the world today, a hundred largest economic units, and that's the word they used was units. 49 are countries and 51 are corporations. Now, you digest that for a second. What does that mean? It means that corporations are the driving force of decision-making today. And corporations are not concerned with human rights. They're not concerned with human life. They're not even concerned with a proper wage for the people that are working for them. So what kind of decisions are going to be made on our behalf by this economic power, these corporate states, I call them? Oh, there's going to be hell to pay, as they say for some of the things that are going on now. So I, I think that people have to be become aware and become awake and not, and, and power is always in the people's hands, authority. They need to come of one mind and they need to challenge the values that are being shoved at them today because this has become a consumer society. It's driven by economics, it's not driven by common sense. You know, it's not, good sense to to follow somebody just because why you can't give me an answer why you follow him but if he were going to do something like jumping off a, a cliff would you follow him would you do that use your sense use your common sense everybody should be their own leader in other words do your thinking for yourself and we look about and we look about for allies we look about for friends we look about for people who will understand and agree with those mandates of peace. That we are now placing in your hands all life. And it is your responsibility and it is your duty to look after all life. And so when he was speaking like that, he wasn't talking about our aunts and our uncles and our cousins and our fathers and our mothers, he was talking about all life. He was talking about the trees. He was talking about the fish, animals, everything that grows, everything with life, because it is a family.